Both Judaism and Christianity trace their roots to the ancient Hebrew people and the religious traditions of the Israelites, particularly as described in the Hebrew Bible, Old Testament and Christianity. These shared origins are a fundamental link between the two faiths. Jesus was born into a Jewish family and grew up within the cultural and religious milieu of first century Judaism. As such, he can be described as a Jew, an Israelite, and a Hebrew, all of which are terms that refer to the same ethnic and religious identity within the context of his time. Jesus was born to Jewish parents, Mary and Joseph, in Bethlehem, and he was circumcised, according to Jewish tradition, on the eighth day after his birth, Luke 2.21. He was raised in the town of Nazareth in the region of Galilee, where he would have been exposed to Jewish customs, practices, and religious teachings from an early age. Throughout his life, Jesus observed Jewish religious festivals such as Passover, John 2.13, and Sukkot, John 7.2.10, and he participated in synagogue worship and rituals, Luke 4.16.21. As a descendant of the tribe of Judah, Jesus was part of the broader Israelite people, tracing his lineage back to figures such as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The term Israelite refers to the descendants of Jacob, who was renamed Israel, and it encompasses the 12 tribes of Israel, including the tribe of Judah, to which Jesus belonged. Jesus, as a member of the Jewish people, can also be described as a Hebrew, reflecting his cultural and linguistic heritage as part of the broader Semitic population. Jesus' teachings and actions were deeply rooted in the traditions and teachings of Judaism, as reflected in his frequent references to the Hebrew scriptures, Tanakh, and his interpretation of Jewish law and ethics. While Jesus challenged certain interpretations and practices within Judaism, his mission was not to abolish the Jewish faith, but to fulfill its teachings and bring about spiritual renewal and redemption. Jesus' early followers, including his disciples and apostles, were primarily Jewish coming from various regions of Judea, Galilee, and beyond. These followers, often referred to as followers of the way or Nazarenes, continued to identify as Jews, even as they embraced Jesus' teachings about the coming of the kingdom of God and the significance of his life, death, and resurrection. In summary, Jesus' identity as a Jew, an Israelite, and a Hebrew underscores his connection to the religious and cultural heritage of ancient Israel. His teachings and followers emerged within the context of first century Judaism, reflecting a continuity with the traditions and beliefs of his people, while also inaugurating a new chapter in religious history. Throughout history, there have been instances where Christianity has been used as a justification for violence and forced conversion. This dark aspect of religious history reflects the intersection of political power religious zealotry, and cultural imperialism. During periods of colonial expansion, European powers often imposed Christianity upon indigenous peoples through conquest and subjugation. Missionaries were accompanied by military forces, and indigenous populations were coerced or compelled to convert to Christianity under threat of violence or death. The Inquisition, particularly in its Spanish and Portuguese iterations, targeted religious minorities, including Jews, Muslims, and so-called heretics, in an effort to enforce doctrinal conformity within Christian territories. Those who refused to convert to Christianity or adhere to orthodox beliefs were often subjected to torture, imprisonment, and execution. The Crusades, a series of religious wars sanctioned by the Catholic Church, sought to reclaim the Holy Land from Muslim control, but also resulted in violence against Jewish and Eastern Christian communities. Religious conflicts, such as the Thirty Years' War in Europe, pitted Catholic and Protestant forces against each other, leading to widespread devastation and loss of life. Indigenous peoples in the Americas, Africa, Asia, and Oceania were often subjected to forced conversion by European colonizers who sought to eradicate indigenous religions and cultures. Missionaries and colonial authorities employed various tactics, including violence, coercion, and cultural suppression to impose Christianity and undermine indigenous beliefs and practices. Acknowledging the dark chapters of religious history allows for a more nuanced understanding of the complex interactions between faith, power, and human behavior. 
The term Hebrews is often used interchangeably with Jews in various contexts, but it's important to understand the historical and cultural nuances of these terms. Hebrews originally referred to the ancient Semitic people who lived in the region of Canaan and later became known as Israelites. The term likely derives from the biblical figure Eber, who was the ancestor of several ancient Semitic peoples. Over time, the descendants of the Hebrews formed the nation of Israel with its capital in Jerusalem. The Israelites were united under various kings, including David and Solomon, and they adhered to the religion of Judaism, which is based on the Hebrew Bible, Tanakh, and the teachings of the Torah. The term Jews specifically refers to the descendants of the Israelites who adhered to the religion of Judaism, as well as to those who identify with the Jewish peoplehood and cultural heritage. The term Jew is derived from the word Judah, which was one of the ancient Israelite tribes and later became the dominant tribe in the southern kingdom of Judah. Judaism is the monotheistic religion of the Jewish people, encompassing beliefs, rituals, and practices based on the Torah and Jewish tradition. Jews observe religious holidays, ceremonies, and life cycle events according to Jewish law. In addition to religion, Jewish identity encompasses cultural and ethnic elements, including language, Hebrew and Yiddish, customs, traditions, and history. Jews have a shared sense of peoplehood and belonging, often expressed through community ties and cultural institutions. Throughout history, Jewish communities have existed in various regions around the world, forming diaspora communities that have preserved Jewish identity and traditions outside of the historical land of Israel. Baalism refers to the worship of Baal, a prominent deity in ancient Near Eastern religions. Baal was considered a god of fertility, agriculture, storms, and warfare in the pantheons of various civilizations, including the Phoenicians, Canaanites, and other ancient Semitic peoples. This is why the so-called elites are always in a state of war, and this is why you have weather modification and geoengineering. Baal's link to the bull as a phallic symbol is rooted in the symbolism associated with fertility, strength, and virility. The bull's symbolism as a potent and fertile animal aligns with Baal's role as a deity of fertility and agricultural abundance, making the bull a fitting emblem of his divine power and influence. In some religious rituals and iconography, bulls were depicted with exaggerated phallic attributes or were ritually sacrificed as a symbolic act of fertility and renewal. The worship of Baal involved rituals, sacrifices, and ceremonies aimed at securing his favor and blessings upon the land and its people. Baal and Astarte were often depicted together in Phoenician and Canaanite religious art and iconography indicating their close relationship and complementary roles. Their association with fertility and abundance suggests a symbolic connection between masculine and feminine principles, with Baal representing the active generative force of the sky, rain, and thunder, and Astarte embodying the nurturing, life-giving aspects of the earth, fertility, and growth. Rituals and festivals dedicated to Baal and Astarte often involved acts of worship including feasting, dancing, and sexual rites, aimed at invoking their blessings and ensuring the continued prosperity of the community. These rites involved the sacrifice of children to Baal and ritual prostitution to Astarte, where the virgin children of the elite were given to priests in order to participate in sexual intercourse. This is the reason the so-called elites are so deeply involved in pedophilia. The worship of Baal and Astarte spread throughout the ancient Near East, influencing neighboring cultures and religions, including Israelite and Judean religious practices. In some instances, elements of Baal and Astarte worship were incorporated into Israelite religious rituals, despite biblical prohibitions against idolatry and foreign gods. Their interconnectedness reflected a symbolic union of masculine and feminine energies. In some esoteric philosophies, Baal is synonymous with the Egyptian god Set, while Astarte is synonymous with the Egyptian goddess Isis, whose planet is Venus and star is Sirius. Diodorus writes of a famous inscription carved on a column at Nysa in Arabia, wherein Isis described herself as follows. I am Isis, queen of this country. I was instructed by Mercury. No one can destroy the laws which I have established. I am the eldest daughter of Saturn, most ancient of the gods. In its higher octave, Saturn is the guardian of the threshold at the last frontier to the realm of the divine. 
In this capacity, Saturn is equivalent to Lucifer as the light bearer, Jesus Prometheus, who brought the fire to mankind because he really loved humanity in contrast to God Zeus. In its lowest octave, Saturn is equated with Satan, is the seducer, persisting within the ego and a bar to resolve karmic entanglements. By Saturn, they seek to represent that power which maintains the cyclic course of times and seasons. This is the sense that the Greek name of that god bears, for he is called Cronus, which is the same as Kronos, or time. This is why the so-called elites want to control your time. Astarte, revered as a goddess of fertility, exhibits striking parallels with other deities, such as the Greco-Roman goddess Aphrodite Venus, known for her association with love and beauty. Similarly, Ishtar, worshipped by the Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians, and Inanna, a prominent goddess in Sumerian mythology, mirror Astarte's attributes. Additionally, Mary, the mother of Jesus, shares symbolic connections with these goddesses as they are all linked to the planet Venus. This is the reason UFOs are said to be mistaken for Venus. The connection between Baalism and the Phoenicians, Canaanites, Hebrews, and Israelites is rooted in the shared cultural and religious heritage of these ancient peoples. The Phoenicians were an ancient Semitic civilization inhabiting the coastal region of present-day Lebanon, known for their maritime trade, seafaring skills, and cultural achievements. Baal was one of the chief deities in the Phoenician pantheon, and his worship was central to Phoenician religious practices. Temples dedicated to Baal were erected in major Phoenician cities such as Tyre and Sidon. The Canaanites were another ancient Semitic people who inhabited the land of Canaan, which corresponds to modern-day Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, and parts of Syria and Jordan. Baal was a prominent god in Canaanite religion, often depicted as a storm god, wielding lightning and rain. Canaanite mythology featured stories of Baal's battles against other deities, symbolizing the struggle between order and chaos. This is where you get the phrase, order out of chaos. The Hebrews were a Semitic people who originated in the ancient Near East and eventually became known as the Israelites after the establishment of the Kingdom of Israel. Throughout their history, the Hebrews and Israelites encountered the worship of Baal among the surrounding peoples, including the Phoenicians and Canaanites. The Hebrew Bible, Tanakh, records numerous instances of conflict between the Israelites and followers of Baal, as well as warnings against idolatry and foreign gods. Despite prohibitions against idol worship, some Israelites were influenced by Baalism and engaged in syncretistic practices, blending elements of Baal worship with their own religious traditions. This included child sacrifice. In summary, Hebrews are the ancient Semitic people who formed the basis of the Israelite nation, while Jews are the descendants of the Israelites who adhere to the religion of Judaism and identify with the Jewish peoplehood. While there is significant overlap between the two terms, they represent different aspects of the broader Jewish identity and heritage. Baalism, on the other hand, was a significant religious phenomenon in the ancient Near East, particularly among the Phoenicians, Canaanites, and other Semitic peoples. The worship of Baal had cultural and religious implications for these civilizations, including interactions and conflicts with the Hebrews and Israelites, whose monotheistic beliefs stood in contrast to the polytheistic practices of their neighbors. Hebrews and Israelites are often considered to be the same people under different names, reflecting different periods of their history and cultural development. Despite the shift in terminology from Hebrews to Israelites, both terms essentially refer to the same ethnic and cultural group. The Israelites were the descendants of the Hebrew patriarchs, including Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they preserved their ancestral traditions, language, and religion throughout their history. The interchangeable use of the terms Hebrews and Israelites highlights the continuity of the ancient Semitic people from their early origins to the formation of the nation of Israel. Denying that Hebrews, Israelites, and Jews are the same people is a denial of reality because it overlooks the historical continuity, shared ancestry, and cultural and religious identity that unite these groups. Recognizing their interconnectedness is essential for understanding the rich tapestry of Jewish history and heritage. Denying that Hebrews, Israelites, and Jews integrated pagan Baalism into their religious practices and cultural milieu is a denial of historical evidence and scholarly consensus.
The integration of elements of Baal worship into Israelite and Jewish religious life is well documented in ancient texts, archaeological findings, and academic research, and it is an integral part of understanding the complex religious history of the ancient Near East. The integration of pagan Baalism into Hebrew, Israelite, and Jewish religious practices did at times include the practice of child sacrifice. Historical evidence and biblical texts prove that certain segments of these ancient societies engaged in this ritualistic act as part of their devotion to Baal and other pagan deities. Moloch, Molech, a fallen angel in paradise lost 11-4, where he is described as the fiercest spirit that fought in heaven, now fiercer by despair. In Hebrew lore, he is a Canaanitish god of fire to whom children were sacrificed. Solomon built a temple to him, Kabbalah. The mystical philosophy or theosophy of the Jews is called the Kabbalah. It is intimately connected with the symbolic science of Freemasonry. Much use is made of it in the high degrees and entire rites have been constructed on its principles. In what estimation the Kabbalah is held by Jewish scholars, we may learn from the traditions they teach and which Dr. Ginsburg has given in his exhaustive works, Kabbalah page 84 in the following words. The Kabbalah was first taught by God himself to a select company of angels who formed a theosopleic school in paradise. After the fall, the angels most graciously communicated this heavenly doctrine to the disobedient child of earth. In all who formed the unbroken tradition, David and Solomon were first initiated into the Kabbalah. Baal Davar, a term for the adversary. Ha, Satan, used by Cassitic Jews of the 18th century. Loss, Lucifer, the agent of divine providence, the laborer of ages. Since his fall, he is one of the fallen angels. He has spent 6,000 years trying to give form to the world. I am that shadowy prophet who 6,000 years ago fell from my station in the eternal bosom. Lucifer, light giver, erroneously equated with the fallen angel, Satan, due to a misreading of Isaiah 14:12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? An apostrophe which applied to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, but see under Satan. It should be pointed out that the authors of the books of the Old Testament knew nothing of fallen or evil angels, and do not mention them, although at times, as in Job 4.18, the Lord put no trust in his angels and charged them with folly, which would indicate that angels were not all that they should be. The name Lucifer was applied to Satan by St. Jerome and other church fathers. Milton in Paradise Lost applied the name to the demon of sinful pride. Lucifer is the title and principal character of the epic poem by the Dutch sheikhs, Peare Vondel, who uses Lucifer in lieu of Satan, and a principal character in the mystery play by Imre Madak, The Tragedy of Moon. Blake pictured Lucifer in his illustrations to Dante. George Meredith's sonnet, Lucifer in Starlight, addresses the fiend as Prince Lucifer. Actually, Lucifer connotes star and applies, or originally meant to apply, to the morning or evening star, Venus. To Spencer and Hearn of heavenly love, Lucifer is the brightest angel, even the child of light. Light is an important word in the Masonic system. It conveys a far more recondite meaning than it is believed to possess by the generality of readers. Freemasons are emphatically called the sons of light because they are, or at least entitled to be, in possession of the true meaning of the symbol. While the profane or uninitiated who have not received this knowledge are, by a parody of expression, said to be in darkness. In Masonic symbolism and tradition, King Solomon's chair holds significant importance. According to Masonic lore, King Solomon, the biblical king of Israel known for his wisdom, oversaw the construction of the first temple in Jerusalem. The chair represents the seat of authority and wisdom, often symbolizing leadership, justice, and enlightenment. In Masonic lodges, the master's chair, also known as the worshipful master's chair, is referred to as King Solomon's chair. It is typically placed in the center of the lodge room, elevated to signify the authority of the worshipful master who presides over lodge meetings and ceremonies. The symbolism of King Solomon's chair in Masonic lodges reflects the values of wisdom, leadership, and moral guidance, drawing on the biblical narrative and historical significance of King Solomon as a revered figure in Freemasonry. In Kabbalistic tradition, 
King Solomon is often depicted as a master of mystical wisdom, including the study and understanding of Kabbalah. According to Kabbalistic lore and later mystical interpretations, King Solomon's wisdom was attributed to his deep understanding of the divine and his ability to commune with angelic beings. One popular legend in Kabbalistic literature involves Solomon receiving his wisdom and knowledge directly from God, who granted him insight into the secrets of the universe, including the mystical teachings of Kabbalah. Another aspect of this legend suggests that Solomon acquired his understanding of Kabbalah through divine revelation and personal meditation, often depicted in Kabbalistic texts as dialogues with angelic beings or encounters with divine manifestations. Additionally, some Kabbalistic sources attribute the authorship of certain texts, such as the Sefer Yetzirah, Book of Creation, to King Solomon. These texts are foundational in Kabbalistic thought and are believed to contain mystical teachings and insights into the nature of creation. While the historical accuracy of these legends is debatable, they serve to highlight King Solomon as a symbol of wisdom and spiritual insight in Kabbalistic tradition, linking him with the mystical teachings of Kabbalah through legendary narratives and symbolic interpretations of biblical texts. The idea that Kabbalah was taught to the Jewish people by fallen angels is a belief found in certain mystical and esoteric traditions, particularly within some Kabbalistic texts and interpretations. According to this belief, fallen angels, often referred to as watchers or Grigori in certain texts, descended to earth and imparted forbidden knowledge, including the secrets of Kabbalah, to select individuals among the Jewish people. These fallen angels were said to have rebelled against God and were cast out of heaven, but they retained knowledge of divine mysteries. In some mystical traditions, particularly those influenced by apocryphal and pseudepigraphic texts like the Book of Enoch, fallen angels are depicted as intermediaries between the divine and human realms, transmitting esoteric teachings to humanity. This transmission of knowledge, although forbidden, was believed to empower individuals with spiritual insight and understanding beyond conventional human comprehension. The concept of fallen angels teaching Kabbalah serves to underscore the mysterious and transcendent nature of Kabbalistic wisdom, attributing its origins to divine revelation and supernatural encounters.